Hello and welcome, Crosstown Gamer here, and today we are going to officially start our playthrough of A Distant Plane, Insurgency in Afghanistan, Volume 3 in GMT's coin series, uh, designed by Volko Runke and Brian Train. So, um, in the last video we went over how to set up for the short scenario, as well as um, basically most, if not all, of the rules, aside from the propaganda card sequence, which we will encounter naturally. Um, and so it's time to actually start playing this thing, and so I have the deck prepared here, but I haven't flipped over the card yet to see who's going to be playing first. So let's hop right on into the gameplay, and uh, just a quick caveat, I think everything's in the right spot. I did have to move this whole board um, to a different room temporarily, and then I moved it back because uh, we needed to use this table for something. So if this isn't 100% identical to the actual setup of the short scenario, I apologize. I did spot check a few places and it seemed fine. But anyway, uh, first few cards are probably going to be pretty slow as we get acclimated to the procedure and the sequence of play of all of these different things. Um, and I'm not going to claim to be a master strategist at this game either. I love coin games, but I am sort of terrible at them, um, as can be seen through some of my other playthroughs. So maybe this time will be different. And um, just a quick reminder, we are playing as the Coalition forces versus the three bot factions. So let's see what's up first. We got PRTs. It looks like it's a coalition capability and we are uh, first eligible for that. And I think event card here, maybe maybe I place it there. Um, I don't know. I don't really like that. I'm going to just place it underneath. This is going to be the card that we're playing, and then the one that comes up next is going to be Afghan Commandos. Looks like we are second eligible there, and government is up first. So, um, we could play this for the event. It's a coalition capability. We already have three capabilities from the um, just onset, the setup. Uh, had three of those. So this one... Training operation for coalition may buy civic action in one or two spaces. Oh, right, because uh, currently you can, as a as the coalition, you can, uh, in one space with coin control, you can buy civic actions with government resources. I guess that's to prevent you from, since you're using all the government resources, from just picking, like, every spot on the map and just uh, doing the civic actions there. So that's pretty great. Um, but I'm worried, like, I, I feel like what, what my downfall was in Andy and Abyss was a uh, loss of tempo. Like, I kept trying to get momentum cards and capability cards, and I wasn't doing enough on the map to actually, you know, take control of places and uh, worry about support or opposition. So I'm wondering if it might be best right out the gate to actually do something with our turn. Um... And we, I mean, we, I'll go through those uh, capabilities that we have. They're pretty nice, and this one's really nice too, but I think I don't want to lose tempo here. So we're going to do um, either an operation and special activity, or we are going to pass if we want to do this here. So if we pass the, uh, if we pass to do this card, the government faction might get to do this. I don't imagine that they are going to want to maybe we can get everything our hearts desire if we uh, look at the the flow chart for the government faction and see when they would do an event if the current card's a capability see 8.1 capability <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh let me pause real quick okay so uh basically what happens here is the government would only take a um, uh, <laughs> capability for us, uh, and we need to worry about the warlords too. What are they going to do? They're only going to take a co uh, capability for the coalition if the coalition's a non-player and on a die roll, then it's uh, they receive less than the number of total propaganda cards there are left. So they would a four or less. Uh, it might be less than or equal to. Actually, I think it's less than. So if there's four cards in there, they'd have to roll a three, a two, or a one to be able to take this. But only if we are a non-player, 
they're not going to benefit us as a player. So um, at least that's my interpretation of the rules. <laughs> if that's wrong, please do say so in the comments. But I don't want to let them do our dirty work for us anyway. And it's going to be a moot point because the warlords will do so on behalf of the non-player Taliban um, for, the, you know, they might take this event too. We'll see. Um, so, you know, even if we did pass, the government might not have a chance to take pick this up for us. Um, we do have to worry about if we don't do this event, um, our assaults can only target one space per card, which does suck. Um, again, though, I, I just think I don't want to lose any momentum. I just want to go, go, go right out the gate this time. Um, so I think I'm going to do the special activity and operation. Um, we could do an operation only, no special activity, and that would prevent them from taking this event, which might be beneficial. Um, we'll, let's take a look at our stuff in a second. Or we can pass, I mean, it looks like the government probably wants to take this event because uh, they can free sweep and free assault in a spot. Um, so that's probably going to be best for them. Um, so if we play this card and the warlords play this card, um, you know, this go around, they don't pass, which I don't think they would. Um, then the government would be first up on the next card, be able to do this really good thing that benefits everybody. Well, benefits the counterinsurgent factions. Um, so I think that's a pretty decent lay of the land and, and what we're going for here. So, um, let's just do it. Um, so let's look at our potential uh, operations that we could do. We could train in which we could buy civic actions and get support, which is what we need to uh, win. What we're, what we're hoping for is um, total support plus the number of available pieces here to be greater than 30. So let's get support first and then worry about withdrawing our troops. So train looks like a good option for us um, because we will be allowed to, we can add uh, government cubes onto the map as well as train in one spot, or sorry, civic action in one spot. And um, and yeah, that sounds pretty good. In which case we'd be able to surge or airlift. Um, patrol is on any lens of communication. We can move troops into or along them and activate one gorilla. Um, per each cube on the line of communication right now no one's on lines of communication like at all um and in andy and abyss the bots tended not to actually jump on those so i'm i'm not worried about protecting those just yet we'll see if that's a really bad decision or not so i'm, I'm less inclined to patrol sweep is always a good option um we could basically move some pieces around including government pieces and uh, move them into spaces. And then if there's any coalition pieces active there, we can activate one gorilla for each cube. Um, I don't believe our capabilities have anything to do. Oh yeah. There's one with a sweep operation. We could activate another three gorillas in any one space. So that's pretty solid too. Uh, we could take a space, you know, like this and just, um, activate, you know, three gorillas there um, in the hopes that we could then assault, gain control, you know, plop down our own pieces, um, get, you know, control and uh, support. Um, you know, this would be another option for something like that. So sweep is pretty good. Um, but I know that in, in the other coin games, it's harder to gain support and opposition, especially after the insurgent factions like the Taliban or the warlords are going to start doing terror ops and putting terror markers down. And it's going to cost a lot more to adjust support and opposition on the map. So I, I'm still thinking, I'm still leaning toward train, um, but sweep is a good option. And then assault is going to be worthless for us because it's only going to affect active guerrillas and everything is underground currently. So... Um, between these two, I'm thinking we're going to do a train. Um, and so any provinces with a coalition piece or in Kabul, um, which is most of the spaces on this kind of eastern seaboard. I guess it's not a seaboard, it's landlocked, but um, the eastern, southeastern region of the map. Um, 
up against Pakistan, then we have pieces there. So, um, yeah, we can't really get up into here yet. But any pieces, or any provinces with coalition pieces, and in anywhere, we're, we're going to have to pay with the government resources anywhere where we're placing cubes. Um, if there's a base, we can place government cubes there. Otherwise, if there's just a regular piece, like a, a troop, but no base, then we can, um, we can do this extra part. So anywhere with a base, we can add government cubes, and then we need to think about where we want to do the civic action, because we absolutely want to do the civic action. Um, I'm thinking for the civic action, we want to pick a high population area, because that's going to nudge our um, victory condition tracker, um, our path to, to winning to be higher. So there's a lot of two pop areas um, that we can look at, but I'm looking at uh, Kaust right now because it's a three pop. It's got the two plus the one. So I'm thinking, and it's got a base, so and it's coin controlled. So we can adjust. Uh, we don't have to add cubes in here to do the um, civic action, but we can if we'd like. Uh, and that might be nice, although there is a Taliban base there. Um, it'll just cost us a little more. And then we need to think about, so if that's our spot that we're going to um, civic action, we need to look and see if there's any other spots where we would want to add government um, pieces. And I think here might be good. We just need a, oh no, we need a base to, to add cubes onto the map. Um, I was going to say here would be good because then we could get control. Um, is there any spot where we have no control but we have a base? I don't think so. So um, maybe to protect Kandahar, we want to put more government troops down there. And that gives us some flexibility to go into these other um, regions. So that might be nice. Although it also might be nice to go here. Uh, because then we have access to a lot of this western and central part of the map. And we still were nearby to um, protect some of these other locations. So I'm thinking we're at least going to train here. And possibly here or Kandahar. I, maybe both. So it'd be three resources, six resources, and then nine for the uh, civic total. Uh, which is like a third of it. So um, let's just let's just do it. Um, so I'm going to train in these three spots, and I'm not going to place cubes in there because it would cost an extra um, extra three resources to do so. Actually, you know what? On second thought, s screw this. We're not going to go here. We're going to place cubes. We are going to do the civic action here. Um, because this has access to a lot of good potential spots as well. Uh, and then we're going to train down here as well. So regular train, regular train, civic action for a total of nine. So it's three uh, where cubes are placed, so six total. And then buying civic action is going to be three uh, resources as well, I believe. Oh, gosh. I've messed this up before, so... Um... Hold on. Yep, it's three. <laughs> um, some, some other coin games, it's more or less. So three. Um, we can place troops or police. And I think we want to do... Let's just do even amounts for each spot. So three and three. Um, th so we're going to need six total troops. Three are going to go down here. One, two, three. Uh, three are going to go up here. One, two, three. Because we can place up to, up to six. And then three. Man, I'm going to have to use those overflow boxes. Um, and three. Luckily, most of the spots on the map are like really massive in size. So hopefully it won't be a big deal. Um, I don't want this to look like... There's pieces in Kabul. Okay, and then we are going to buy the civic action here, which will let us take one of these markers and place it here and support. So that's going to um, give us 
three more support. One, two, uh, three. As well as, so it didn't do anything to opposition, didn't do anything to control. Um, same with this. So I think that's all that's all we needed to do there, but we do need to adjust the government resources and it costs nine, so they're down to 21 now. So first turn of the game and we just spent a crap ton of the government resources. Then we can surge or airlift. Um, surge is going to add or withdraw our forces, which it's the beginning of the game. I don't think we need to withdraw yet. Let's get some more support on the board before we do that. And airlift, we can do uh, redistribute troops and uh, government troops in three spaces. We do have, no, that's airstrike. Uh, we can also, that's airstrike as well. <laughs> okay, so our airstrikes are going to be really awesome uh, when we end up doing those. And then I think, yeah. Um, we can't do an airstrike, but when we end up doing those, we have some capabilities that are going to make that good. So maybe we should have done sweep after all, but it's too late. Um, yeah, I don't want to worry about that. I want to move um, government pieces around as well as our troops. And we can do this in any space between among three spaces. And redistribute any coalition and up to three government troops. So I'm thinking, let's get control of this. So that we can start buying civic actions here. That's a two-pop zone. Um, and then we've got control of a lot of spaces here. Um, this is a zero-pop zone that we're in. I don't know if it really is going to make too much of a difference if we move out of there. Um... Oh, we can we can also put some in here. So maybe let's take some. Do we have? Yeah. So maybe let's let's pick Kandahar as one. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Um, okay, Kandahar as one space that we're going to pull our stuff from, and then we're going to pull them into um, Baglan and where else did I say? Nuristan, I think, the the higher population zones. So there's four um, non-coin pieces here. So we need five total pieces here for control, coin control. And then we only need one piece there. And the airlift says it's troops. So the surge is pieces, so we can move bases around. Uh, the airlift is just troops. So let's start from here, though. We can move up to three government troops, and then our own. Let's just do the one of our own. Um, so I said we've got a piece here, which is fine. We want a piece in Baglan so that we can train there later. Um, and then we have one, two, three to four. So we need two here for coin control, and we need one here. So this allows us to control both of these regions. So that's three. Really, that's five for the government. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and the warlords are under here. They just lost five because they want uncontrolled population. And now that's down one, two, three, four, five, like so. Right. There's a fast way to do this math, and I don't know what it is, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think it's just eight uncontrolled population. So, yeah, that makes sense. Great. So that was our air lift. Um, and so we did the Operation Special Activity. I think we wanted to do that, even though it helped the government out a lot. Uh, now we have control and pieces in some high population areas. We can begin to do more train uh, to do garner more support. So 
That was our turn, even if it allows the Warlords to do the event. Let's take a look. If the current card's a capability, see 8.1 capability, and they, you know, on second thought, so I'll, I'll show you in the rules what I'm looking at here and my thought process for why, um, why I'm behaving a particular way. Uh, and then you can argue with me in the comments about whether this is stupid or... Um, so it's 8.1. Okay, so we're going to do a decision here. Capabilities, the government and warlords. So it's the warlords here. Non-player government, non-player warlords will take the shaded, unshaded capability. The non-player warlords on the non-player Taliban's behalf, non-player government on behalf of the non-player coalition. If the 1d6 die roll is less than the number of unplayed propaganda cards. Um, the Taliban and warlords are non-players. The warlords will seek to play any shaded capability subject to... Okay, so um, even though this is a coalition capability, this is going to be a benefit to the Taliban. They're, they're doing it on the Taliban's behalf. Um, if they roll a die and it's less than four, because that's the number of propaganda cards left. So if it's a three, one, two, or three, they'll do the shaded um, capability. That's, that's what I'm assuming. Although... Because there's two different types of capabilities. There's the Taliban ones, and then there's the coalition ones. And I'm assuming that it's not just, oh, they're gonna play. They're only going. The warlords are only gonna play the Taliban capability ones because that benefits the Taliban player. I assume that means that they will play the shaded version of this one because it hurts us, which benefits the Taliban player or non-player rather. Um, because so, they're just doing it on behalf of the Taliban player, and the Taliban player would want to do the thing that hurts the coalition. That's that's my assumption there, and so I think they are going to at least roll the die and see if this is something they want to do. If this is wrong, like let me know early, because I'm probably going to make this mistake a million more times, or however many capabilities are in the deck, that many more times. Um, okay, so the Warlords have this green die, and I need to get my die um, trays, dice trays, out. But um, if it's a one, two, or three, they're going to do this event. Otherwise, they're going to move along. Five. So they're not going to do it anyway. Which is good. <laughs> Thank goodness. And then they'll play the shaded part of the event if it will. Okay, so we're going to skip this because... Um, We've decided we're not going to play the event because it's not a capability that they want to do. Yeah, and it's not going to do either of those two things. So, and they're not going to pass. So, would Rally replace gorillas with bases? And so they would do so. Let's look at the Warlord's Rally operation. And we are just going to spend 30 minutes on one card, and I'm sorry, these will become faster um, as we go. So a rally is going to replace, if, if they're able to replace two gorillas um, with a base, then they can do that. Um, and then if there's a base already there and it's not Pashtun, they can uh, place gorillas up to the population plus bases. And so... Rally would replace gorillas with bases. That means basically that they have to um, would would rather than could. Um, a lot of times, what they want to do here is only replace with a base if there's three or more. Um, because if you had two in a space and you replace them with a base, then that base is sitting there all by itself, um, and it's you know ripe for the pickings as far as assaulting or uh, airstrikes those kinds of things are going to take those out easily whereas um 
if you have a situation like this where there's a base but it's protected by an underground gorilla, you have to remove the underground gor or the gorillas first before you're allowed to remove bases. So they're kind of protected there. I assume the um, would in place of the word could means that they're only going to rally if there's a spot with at least three warlords so that they can uh, place a base. And let's check if that's true anywhere. I think actually they only have one gorilla at each location that they're in. They also have a base there, but um, just the one. Yeah, I don't see any spots for that. So no. Is the player, which is us, coalition, uh, at a positive victory margin? No, because uh, in order for that to happen, we would need to be all the way up from 13 to 31. So we're way not, not in positive victory margin. So it looks like they want to march. They want to leave a minimum of one gorilla at each warlord base. Oh man, that's not going to happen anywhere because there's only one warlord at each base and there's no space where it's just warlord gorillas no base um and then there's an underlined two here i'm trying to look for where that's specified it's not going to matter because um this is going to be an if none situation if none usually so with the attack down here if none, whoosh, terror. If none, whoosh, march. Um, and then if none, it looks like we're going to go... This is a double-sided arrow. And then if it's a loop, then you're going to attack. Okay, so we are not going to march because we can't leave the requisite number of warlord gorillas at the in provinces that protect bases. So... And they don't want to create control. It's fun. Um, so they're going to rally in a maximum of three spaces, potentially. If there's none here, then we're going to try to attack. Um, so rally, they're not going to do this first bullet because they don't have three plus warlord gorillas in any space. At the highest one plus population with a base and room for a base, they're going to rally to place gorillas that would enable cultivate and then they're going to cultivate so let's look at what cultivate does i think it gives them resources um province selected by rally must have greater than zero populations and more gorillas than police oh they just oh they put they place a base there i'm sorry that's it's not extort that's the resource one okay let's take a look here they have, um, like, here's a spot, positive population, a base, space for a base, more warlord gorillas than police here. I think that's, that's a perfectly viable location, whereas here is not because it has zero population. Um, potentially here, if they rallied gorillas in first... And if they rallied gorillas in first, they could do it there too. So I think this, so it's a maximum of three spaces. Let's see. Highest one plus pop with one warlord base and room for a base. That's all three of those spots. Um, but two of them were two population and one of them was only one population. So I think there's two spots. There's Nuristan and uh, Balk. If rallying, placing gorillas enables the cultivate rally and then cultivate. Otherwise, they're going to cultivate first and then rally. Um, and at one. So they're not going to do it in two spots. They're going to do it in one. And priority is going to be this one. Um, there's this star, though, and I want to see where that is on the map. Or on the sheet. I don't see the star. Is it up here? Mm -hmm. Well, I might play this wrong too then. Because um, I don't see the star. I know it, mean, it probably means that they need more warlords 
uh, gorillas there than police to be able to do it. Um, if base and not Pashtun. Um, okay. Warlord bases, but no other warlords. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna skim through the the rest of these requirements and see if we're gonna get three uh, spaces to do this in. Um, here though, it's just at one spot, so we we are gonna pick one spot, and then the priority is going to be this first. Um, so I think then it will go to Nuristan because um, Balk they can just cultivate first and then rally in there. Oh, but I mean, here they could, they would need to rally first to get more gorillas and then cultivate. But the, the way this, these priorities work is we're going to go through each of the black sequ ones sequentially. And then within those, we're going to go through each of the numbered priorities. Ugh. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of reading on the side here about this, but there's going to be one spot, potentially. I don't think we're going to do both of these, because that would be two spots. Um, so in for three, there's no spot with warlord bases, but no other warlords. Um, all the bases have p other pieces. <clears throat> then where warlord gorillas, but no bases, that also doesn't exist. Then at the highest population... Oh, here's the star. <laughs> um, wow, it's, it's just right there. Place gorillas until none available, then flip gorillas underground. Where so, okay. Um, all right. Well, there's at least one, if not two, here, and then there's going to be one there. One sec. Okay, it actually does call out in the rules this specific example where the sequential priorities might have nested priorities in here that are also sequential, and they're to be treated as priorities within this this priority here. However, um, I was just thinking about this. Cultivate is a maximum of one space. Uh, they can only do it in one space. So um, we are going to basically go for a spot... Um, we could either cultivate. So, if so <laughs> let me let me gather my thoughts here. So, if the spot we pick needs rally to be able to do the cultivate, then we want to rally first and then cultivate. I think that makes sense. And otherwise, we want to cultivate first and then rally because cultivating plops a base down, and that gives us more pieces to work with to to rally because it's the bases plus the number of uh, population. So, um. We're gonna we're gonna do both of these, but so it depends on which one which type of space we pick, and I believe that um, if the priorities listed aren't um, such that it it narrows it down to one, we typically would do the uh, where it is the map to random roll to f determine. But since there's only two spots available, I'm going to roll a die and on a 1, 2, or 3, do one of the spaces. On a 4, 5, and 6, do the other space for that. Um, so let's do a 1, 2, or 3 is going to be Balkh, and then 4, 5, and 6 is going to be Nuristan for this rally. Two. So it'll be at Balkh. So what they are suggesting we do is we're going to cultivate first and then rally because we're able to. So to cultivate... The procedure is just place one warlord base, and again, it's a, it's a province selected for rally. It has greater than zero population, and it has more warlords than police. So we will place this base up here, and uh, then we will rally there. However, um, the oh they don't need yeah they don't need um, bases to win, but anyway. So then they're going to rally, and rally will place um, the number, if it's non-Pashtun, which it's non-Pashtun because the Pashtun spaces are the um, green text, and this spot appears non-Pashtun. So if, if not Pashtun, and there's a base there, um, 
we've already cultivated. So there, we're going to place gorillas up to the population plus the bases. So population is two, bases is two. We're going to place four warlords there. Boom. And then, um, and the reason we had to roll is because the highest population space with like this priority, this big priority, when we're choosing a spot, um, both of those spots had a population of two. They both had a warlord base and they both had room for a base. So we had to select within, within that. We move along. Um, again, no and no, and then we're just going to do it at the highest one plus population space. So I believe that, and, and we're just going to make sure that they can rally basically anywhere. Yes, anywhere. Um, and so the highest, the highest, uh, one plus population space is actually going to be this coust because... Um, oh no, it could be Conduz as well, um, because that has three population. Um, oh, uh, there's a bunch of spots on here. What am I talking about? Kaust has the three population. We got three population here. We got three population there. They're all coin controlled, um, which the warlords want to mitigate that. If I were the player, I would rally here because, um, there's a base there, so you get a lot more than just one, but... Um, that's fine. So there's three loca locations to choose from, and since it's not selective at all, we just have to choose randomly. So since there's three spots, oh wait, um, highest one plus population, and they are allowed to do it in, um, in Kabul. That's one of the spots that they are allowed to rally in. Um, that has the highest population by far. It's got four population. Um, so I guess they're going to rally there. Yeah. So, um, to rally in Kabul, they just get to place one piece because they don't have a base there. So they're going to place their one base. And so they've rallied in two spots, in Balkh as well as in Kabul. And so each rally is going to cost one resource, if I'm not mistaken. One resource per space selected. So they drop down to 18. And uh, they also did their special activity already. They've cultivated. Um, so they are going to go here and normally the player would do a limited operation but they're allowed to do a full turn because they're a bot so that's why we did the full turn plus special activity so we're going to adjust our eligibility here and we will play the next card which is going to be afghan commanders we'll flip over the following card which is going to be al-qaeda and um oops <laughs> we're going to flip it over um and then we're set up for the next turn i'm going to stop here because we're at 38 minutes and hopefully this has been helpful. I know I'm kind of slogging through this, over-explaining a lot of things, under-explaining some things. Um, but that's the first card of the game. And uh, we've got a long way to go. And I hope to see you next time. This has been A Distant Plane, and uh, I'm Crosstown Gamer. See you next time.